If I had to recommend just one keyboard for everyone looking to get into the custom mechanical keyboard hobby, this would be it, the MK870. Four reasons for this. One, the price is relatively low, so it's not quite as shocking for beginners used to getting membrane keyboards for under $10. Two, the layout is standard, which makes it easier to transition from a full-sized keyboard as well as allowing for a greater variety of choice in terms of keycap sets. Three, it's bare bones, so beginners can already pick out their own switches in keycaps, which I think are some of the biggest joys you can get out of the hobby when you're just starting out. Four, it's south-facing, which rules out interference concerns with cherry profile keycaps. Yes, beginners will neither care about nor notice interference, but if they're serious about diving deep into the hobby, and we know they will, I think they're going to be grateful that their first keyboard has no compatibility issues with the most common keycap profile. But that's all just based on the spec sheet. How does the board fare in daily use? What does it sound and feel like? Does it have great modding potential? Let's find out. Before we continue, let me tell you about this video's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop destination for PCB-related services, including PCB assembly for prototypes and low-volume productions. With their years of experience in the field, PCBWay is able to source components and parts from different distributors at lower prices. Head on over to PCBWay.com to check out their specific capabilities in PCB assembly. And when you're ready to get started, Get an instant quote from a PCBWay sales representative and be on your way to turning your dream project into reality. Big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. This MK870 was sent to me by the folks over at Banggood. It's been months actually since I received this. Sorry, Banggood. I'll leave an affiliate link for this in the description, but currently this is out of stock at Banggood and it doesn't seem like a very high priority for them to restock it as they say that the demand for it has been low. So I'll leave some more links to other places you may be able to buy this from. Price varies pretty significantly from 42 US dollars to 80, but you'd also have to factor shipping costs, so do your research. There is also a tri-mode version of this keyboard, which does not seem to be all that common. It also seems to be north-facing instead of south which doesn't make it as promising an offering as the wired-only version, at least in my opinion. The MK870 comes with software to customize key bindings, RGB lighting, and assign macros. As with most keyboard software that isn't VIA, it's pretty confusing and overall unpleasant to use. And it's especially annoying for me as I don't plan on using RGB and don't need to rebind any keys. So you've got two modes for customizing the board app and onboard. App mode customizations only function as long as the software is on. This means that you can't use any of the built-in function keys to customize your RGB. You need to do that with the app. Annoyingly, turning off the RGB from the software does not seem to work. I worked around it by selecting a custom RGB mode with no lights assigned. Onboard mode customizations persist even when the software is not on. It's also in this mode where you can customize a second layer which does also work even when the software is on. This layer is referred to as the FN1 layer, which is different from the FN layer, which is the default pre-programmed function layer for customizing RGB and accessing things like media controls. So you do have to set an FN1 key, which is different from the FN key, which is always the second key to the right of the spacebar. This cannot be changed. Still with me here? Let's talk about those default function keys for controlling RGB. If you look at the table in the manual, you might, like I did, think that some of these functions sound identical. Fear not, for I have dived into this for you and demystified it. Okay, so you've got two types of RGB modes, which I will call reactive and non-reactive. Reactive modes react to your key presses while non-reactive modes do not. You cycle between reactive modes with FN plus delete, and you cycle between non-reactive modes with FN plus insert. To change what color are used in these different modes, you would either press FN plus print screen to set the color to rainbow or you'd cycle through single colors with repeated presses of FN plus pause, FN plus page up and FN plus page down toggle custom RGB modes. You can program these by pressing FN plus end then pressing either page up or page down to choose which of the two custom modes you want to change. Pressing any key will change the color of that key. Once you're satisfied with the colors, press FN plus end again to save the setup. Got all that? Great, let's turn RGB off now. 
Like I said, I've had this keyboard for a while, and I did actually use it while working on other videos. It had to stay stock and unmodded in preparation for the making of this video you're watching right now, but the experience was solid. I used stock Gateron Pro Milky Yellows on it, and they sound fine. You know, inoffensive. The stabilizers don't sound rattly or feel mushy. The typing feel is stiff, which is to be expected, but not uncomfortable. Here, let's listen to it. I put some lubed Gateron Pro Reds in there to compare the sound with stock switches versus with lubed ones, and surprisingly, they sounded pretty much identical to me. These Pro Milky Yellows have been very impressive, even completely stock, and I've had a pretty similar experience with the Box Inks. I'm planning on doing a cheap versus expensive video pitting these two against each other in the future, so make sure you're subscribed if you'd like to see that. Moving forward, we'll stick with the lubed Pro Reds, just in case there's something I'm not hearing on the stock switches. Step 1 in tearing this board down, unscrew these 4 screws on the bottom, two of which are underneath the flip out feet and one of those two underneath a sticker. Step 2, remove the rubber covers from the side USB ports. I failed to do this and ended up with some damage on my top case from trying to force it to come off. Step 3, remove the top case by prying the clips around the board's perimeter. They're pretty tight so you will need to use a plastic spudger or a similar plastic tool. If you use a metal prying tool, you will likely leave scratches and damage on the case like I did on my GG86. Step 4, unscrew the 7 tray mount screws to separate the PCB plate assembly from the bottom case. And lastly, step 5, unscrew the 6 screws attaching the PCB to the plate which will reveal the sheet of silicone sound dampening. A little warning, don't force the tray mount or case screws in as they screw straight into plastic and you may end up damaging these plastic parts like I did. Looking at the stock plate mount stabilizers, we can see that they're pre-clipped and come pretty well lubed. Looking at the PCB, we can see that this board actually supports PCB mount stabilizers. However, the stock plate is built for plate mount stabilizers, meaning the holes aren't big enough for stabs like the Duroc V2s. So instead, I'll be using some version 3 C3 stabs which have smaller housings and should work without issue with this plate. I did also purchase a polycarbonate plate that does support PCB mount stabilizers, but we'll try that out later. While we've got this thing dismantled, let's also apply two layers of painter's tape for the Tempest tape mod. When listening to the back-to-back -back comparison with and without the tape mod, the difference is much smaller than I've become accustomed to with this mod. It's a little more pronounced on the modifiers and when mashing the different rows, but on the normal typing segments, it's really quite subtle. I'm surprised and I'm not sure what the cause of this is. Let me know what you heard. In person, I feel like it has become noticeably thockier, but I don't have a second MK870 handy to compare without the tape mod, so I can't exactly be sure of that. I bought this polycarbonate plate from Shopee Philippines, but I've also seen one on AliExpress alongside a brass plate. I'm not sure if they're the same. You can choose between two versions, one supporting plate mount stabilizers and the other supporting PCB mount stabilizers. Unlike the stock plate, this does not have any standoffs, so you won't be able to screw it to the PCB. When using flexible plates like this, you would normally have to support the plate in some way to prevent it from sagging while installing switches. Fortunately, we have a big sheet of silicone here that can serve Serve that exact purpose. Unfortunately, there is no silicone around the spacebar switch, so the plate can sag there and you won't be able to pull it up if you've got the top case clipped on. Several of the switch sockets on this have alignment issues, causing switches to tilt in certain directions. The switches actuate just fine, but with certain keycap profiles like MT3, with its slightly larger bottom surface area, it does cause the keycaps to scrape against the top case.
With the PC plate, the sound got lower pitched and less harsh. You're never gonna get any flex out of this board because of the way it's constructed, but the polycarbonate material does make for a softer feeling bottom out. Overall, a great improvement. Let's do a quick comparison of our current setup with the other two TKLs in my collection, the XM87 and GG86. As has been the pattern in this video so far, the differences here are not really huge. In terms of volume, the GG86 is most muted and the XM87 loudest. In terms of pitch, I think the MK870 is lowest and the XM87 is highest. If I had to rank them based on my preference, the GG86 would be third place and the MK870 first. The GG86 is just too muted to be satisfying to me. I live in the Philippines where temperatures require you to pretty much always have an electric fan on, and when I use the GG86, I can barely hear it over the din of the fan. The XM87 might actually sound better to me, but the MK870 wins out with its more comfortable typing experience due to the softer bottom out with the PC plate. And lastly, let's try out three more switch keycap pairings. I really like the radiant reds and inks on this despite them being very different from each other. They sit on either end of the quiet to loud and thocky to clacky spectrums and I think it just depends on what I'm in the mood for at any point in time. The MX browns are scratchy as hell as usual and the pro reds are close to the inks but not quite up to their level. I'll leave the full sound tests for these three new setups at the end of the video. The MK870 is not an amazing board by any means, especially if you're already really deep into the hobby like I am. I do wish there was a way to apply something like the O-ring mod to soften the tray mount contact points. As it stands, the whole thing snaps together too tightly for O-rings to have any effect. The polycarbonate plate kind of stands in to produce a similar effect, but it does add cost and may not be accessible to everyone. But these aren't really concerns for beginners. I personally started with a very similar board, the XM87, a plastic tray mount TKL with south facing hot swap sockets. And I found it to be a great introductory keyboard allowing me to experiment with and learn about switches, keycaps, and mods. And the MK870 is a better keyboard in all aspects, so I would wholeheartedly recommend it to all beginners looking to dive into the enthusiast mechanical keyboard hobby. And that concludes my look into the MK870. What do you think about this keyboard? Do you agree that it's the perfect starter board? Any other candidates you would recommend? Let us know in the comments. If you found this video helpful, entertaining, or any other positive adjective, please consider giving it a like and sharing it with a friend who might like it as well. And for more enthusiast keyboard reviews, analysis, and modding journeys, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Thank you so much for watching.